No Fun, the Jen Kirkman podcast, episode 37, season 11. I am your host and only person on this podcast, Jen Kirkman. Am I a host if it's just me? Who cares? It's a weird question to ask 11 years into this solo podcast. So last week, the episode was late because I was moving again. And last week's episode is Patreon only. It's a two-hour episode. Funny stories, relatable tales about moving apartments and all the wacky things that happen. So if you want to get that, you can join my Patreon. Click the link in the show notes to join and you get a seven-day free trial. So there you go. All right. You can at least listen to that episode for free and then you can cancel. I'm never going to know. Go on. Cheat the system. I'm giving you permission. But here we're back this week. This is the free version of the show. If you're listening to this on your favorite podcast app, then you already know that. Okay, so a friend of mine got me into this reality show, dating show, called Naked Attraction. Now, I am a big fan of Love is Blind. I am currently watching the fifth season. I think it's the best season so far. Uh, someone else I know says it's the worst season so far. How do we continue the friendship? But I think that the newest season of Love is Blind is great because you have so many different scenarios going on that one of which would be wild enough for a season, but you have somebody who left the show even though she had found her fiancé that she wanted to be fianced to in the pod. She left the show. He goes into the pod one day, she's gone. Then she comes back. They meet at a restaurant. She's like, look, here's what was going on. He's like, no. Then you have two people on the show that had dated before. And then they get to the pods and they discover it. Although there's a lot of talk going on. They're both They both, I think, have narcissistic personality disorder. I think they both knew what they were doing. They both knew the other was applying, whatever. But then, you know, they had to keep it a secret per the producers. And so one of the women on the show that had been dating someone in real life that had been on the show, that woman became best friends with the woman that was dating that guy that is her ex. There's a lot going on. Then there's one couple, this one guy, literally, like I mean literally, I'm sure, I know, it's edited, but he doesn't speak at all once they get on the honeymoon. He proposes, they had a nice time through the walls of the pod, they meet, and then he stops talking. It's as though someone put crazy glue on his lips. And what ends up happening is they figure out Uh, by talking together that he didn't like all the makeup she had on when they first met. That first moment when they see each other. It's a TV show. Everyone has makeup on. Even though his wife wasn't wearing makeup or his fiance wasn't wearing makeup on their honeymoon or whatever that is, the trip they go on before they get married to see if they want to get married. He uh, said, the moment I met you, I couldn't trust you because you had makeup on. You seemed fake. I mean, I, I can't. She leaves. She's like, bye, it's over. This, so everyone's leaving. But that's what I like about it is people are not just sitting around trying to make it work. You know, day one, that you got yourself a weirdo and there's nothing you can do about it. And we have sat through seasons of watching people trying to make it work. And I'm just, I'm ready for this. I'm ready for a season where people are just leaving. And there's still enough couples to watch. And then, of course, the people that leave, they come back. Oh, we're dating now. I mean, they have to allow it because everyone is leaving. They have to allow, oh, well, this couple left, but they're still dating. So they can come on the show and hang out with everybody. There's just a lot going on. But I'm not a huge reality show person. Love is Blind is kind of my thing. I will also watch The Ultimatum. Same kind of thing in a way. But 
you know, the 90 Day Fiance, The Bachelor. No, hate. Do not like. I just don't even. And I also just cannot make that kind of time. I hate when people say, who has the time for that? Yeah, all, everyone has time for nonsense. It just depends on what time you want to make for your nonsense. I, I, it's so insulting, you know, when you say to someone, oh, I listen to this podcast. It's, it's every, you know, it comes out twice a week. You know, they, they talk about, I don't know, fake plants. Yep, two hours a week. Oh, I don't have that kind of time. You do. You do. You do, Nancy, because I get all of your memes that you send me in my Instagram DMs. You got the time. But you're just doing something else with your time. That's totally fine. You can say, oh, I don't want to make the time for that. I understand. I do want to make the time for the podcast about fake plants because I enjoy it. Yes, we all in life don't have time to do everything we want to do. You're all going to leave this mortal coil, hopefully at the age of 100, perfectly healthy, but just it's time to go because you're 100. And in your last breath, you'll say, I didn't get to do everything I wanted because there's just too much to do and not enough time. Of course. In a very existential sense, we don't have time. But don't say to someone when they're telling you their little reality show joy that they get, who has time for that? Who has time for you as a friend? Anyway, a friend of mine said, you have to watch this show, Naked Attraction. I said, what happens in it? It's a British show, but they do show it on, I think it's on HBO Max here in America. I will not say Max. I will still say HBO Max. And he said, well, it's, it's like Love is Blind. You, you don't see the person. They don't reveal the face um, until a little later. But, but basically, the people are naked, and you see one little body part at a time. And you have to decide if you want to keep going and see more. So I thought, well, that's interesting. And you don't know anything about them and you're not talking to them. You just show up. There's five kind of individual glass booths in front of you. And the people are in the booths. The glass obviously isn't clear and see-through. It's like colored glass. So you can't see them. So I'm thinking, I don't know why I thought this, but when my friend described it to me, I pictured that you see a foot, you know? And then uh, you might see an elbow. I I thought it was this weird thing of, I don't know, you might see a foot that's really hairy or the toenails have fungus or, I I don't know, something, and you might go, ooh, do I want to see more or do I want to say, no, send that person home? You know, what if they just have really gross feet, but they're hot everywhere else? Or, I don't know, someone's got a foot. Oh, my God, that looks just like my ex's foot. I can't. Even though I love it, it's a beautiful foot, but my ex had the same beautiful foot, and I just have to move on. Or an elbow. If you're like, oh, you know what? When they're 80, I can tell that skin's going to be loose. They already have loose skin. I don't know. I thought it was going to be like, that's what I thought the point was, that it's like weird ways to judge someone or like, Their shoulder, you know, oh, I'm a shoulder person. Ooh, I don't like their shoulders. And eventually you'd see them naked or something. I actually didn't realize there was nudity. I know the word naked would imply nudity. I'm not stupid, but apparently I'm stupid because I didn't really think about it. And so all of a sudden I'm at my friend's house, and we're watching it. No, I said I haven't watched it yet. So I'm like, over my friend's house, we're like, not even watching TV. We're like, like I'm I'm helping with something um, that he's working on. And he's like, did you watch that show yet? I'm like, no. He's like, oh my God, you have to watch an episode right now. I'm like, all right. We sit down and watch it. My friend's gay, by the way, in case you're like, why is Jen... It sounds like someone's trying to hit on me by being like, well, let's watch a nudity show together. And he's like, you got to see this. One, two seconds into the episode, you know, this woman standing there. There's the host. Okay, we've got five glass cubes and people behind them and blah, blah, blah. That's my British accent. 
They're like, all right, bring it up. And it just whoop goes up. And there are just five dicks in front of me. It just goes full. The glass lifts. And you see feet, legs, dicks, like up to the belly button. One half of someone's entire body. It just starts. It's basically, it should just be called genital attraction because that's the first thing you're looking at. Just, oh my God, here's their genitals. But you're also looking at like, you know, you can see their stomach, you know, how much hair they have or don't have or fat or thin or thick legs, thin legs, short, tall, big dick, small dick, big balls, uneven balls, small balls. The whole shebang. One guy had a bionic leg. The, of course, and then there's women. They do it for women too. And it's gay and bisexual and straight. It's all of the things. And you say, oh, there's that vagina. Oh, there's this. But then, okay, so then you, you, you get rid of everyone. Then uh, you get rid of the people you're not into. Then the, the glass lifts a little more. And now you see just the whole complete naked person standing there. And you can see their face. And it's, it's, it's actually interesting because sometimes you'll see a body. This, this happened with the men mainly. You see a body. It's like, oh, there's a nice muscular body. Oh, my goodness. This person has a giant penis. Okay. You know, this woman seems very happy. And then the glass goes up and the face of a baby, not a literal baby, but, you know, like the guy looks super young, even though he's 32. Like he might look 22 and you're like, oh. Oh, weird, that face does not match your body. You know, so a lot of times people have let someone go whose body they really like because they're like, oh my God, you just look so young, I can't. I only watched this one episode, but I mean, it's wild. I can't believe it's just dicks, vaginas, boobs, it's just all hanging out. And it because it is, it doesn't seem like such a big deal. And it's not sexy by any means I don't think you're going to be sitting there going oh my god I'm I'm, I'm uh, whew, overheating over here because it's just someone standing there naked it's kind of awkward everyone walks weird when they're naked they must be freezing do you know how cold it is on television uh sets oh my god they must be freezing but anyway very interesting and I think I will continue watching it but Oh, so then after you whittle it down to two people, they come out of the glass and they're just standing there naked, you know, with the host. Host is fully clothed. The contestant who's picking is fully clothed and and they all talk. And then the contestant has to go get naked. So this person who's been judging everyone's body, they walk off, they come on, they're naked. And so, you know, if it's a woman, the two guys that she's picking between, they They look at her and they tell her what they like about her body. I mean, it's mostly very positive. Nobody's being a dick. You know, it's it's very sweet. And people are saying things that they like about people's bodies. And eventually you might have to say, oh, well, that's just, you know, they're a little too hairy for me. Or I don't really, I don't know. It's, It's like, it's not awful. It's weird. It's weird. I mean, I think you'd have to have a pretty good sense of self. And then they interview um, the people for two seconds once they're backstage and and fully clothed again. And and sometimes the guys have been like, oh, fuck her. She was ugly anyway. And you're like, okay, incel. That's kind of scary. Good move not picking that guy. But this one, yeah, well, these two women that ended up together. They went on a date and then they interviewed them later and they didn't really have any chemistry, even though they're both attracted to each other. So there you go. Doesn't always work out according to uh, what you like looking at. So, and I think that's, that's the message of the show. I mean, it's very strange. It's, but there's something about it where everyone's being very nice or it's edited to make everyone look like they're saying nice things. Maybe they edit out all the horrible things, but it really just takes the sexuality out of nudity and it now just seems normal to me to see people doing full frontal on television. And you would think it's the type of show that you go, that is this, the end of society? But I don't think so. It's just nudity. It's not, you know, I don't know. I'm trying to think of other game shows that I think are the end of society. But I guess we all go back to Fear Factor, right? Eating bugs, blah, blah, cliche. Been a joke since the 90s. But uh Yeah, so there you go. All right, well, 
I didn't even mean to talk about that, but that's what I guess what I talked about in the uh, free portion of the show. I'm jumping on over to Patreon. I'm going to talk about, now that the writer's strike is over, my thoughts on the last episodes of In Just Like That that I didn't get to recap. And I'm going to talk about Russell Brand's allegations, the allegations against Russell Brand. And of course, there is some no fun listener emails and other things, surprises that will come up as I keep talking. So see you on the Patreon. If not, until next week, have fun.